Today, I'm going to talk about the future of product management. This is a report that we put together with the hope to help the entire product management industry understand what's going to happen in the future and how we can capitalize on the opportunities ahead of us. My name is Carlos and I'm the founder and CEO of Product School. I created this report in collaboration with over 1,500 product leaders across industries, geographies, and levels of seniority. We believe product management is here to stay, and this is not just for high-tech companies in Silicon Valley. We also did this in collaboration with seven incredible companies who are shaping the future of product management, such as HIP, Pendo, Mural, Wixpanel, Chartio, Miro, and Amplitude. Let's dive in. These are the top five trends that we noticed in our report. Number one is that product management is more in demand than ever and salaries are rising. I'll explain that in a second. Number two is that the product management career paths are widening and there are more opportunities even within the product team. Number three is that companies as a whole are becoming more product led. And this is not just for the product team, this is for the entire organization. Number four is that tools, specifically tools for product managers, are becoming more visual and no code, which is empowering all of us creators to build something regardless of our professional background before we broke into product. And last but not least, lifelong learning is a must. Product managers are hungry and curious and they want to continue investing in themselves. And this doesn't just apply to the entry level PMs, this applies to every single step in the career ladder. So let's start from the beginning. What's going on? Why are salaries rising? Why are more and more companies hiring PMs? Well, the oxymoron is that even some companies who might be downsizing due to pandemic and external circumstances, they're still investing in product because more and more businesses are moving online and more and more teams are working remotely, which means that as a product person, we have a huge opportunity to shape how those companies are going to offer those services online, how teams are going to collaborate. We are at the forefront of innovation. This is happening at high tech companies, of course, although this is not a secret, but this has been extremely accelerated at other organizations that are going through digital transformation processes in finance, in health tech, in um, sorry, healthcare, insurance, and many other industries. So 159,000 is the median salary for a product manager in San Francisco. Obviously, San Francisco is one of the most in-demand markets for product managers. Salaries are also very high. Cost of living is also very high, but I think it's a good, it's a good baseline for all of us to realize that this is happening and that there's a big opportunity. Again, I'm not claiming that this would be the salary in other regions, but I think it's, it's really good benchmark for all of us. Now, if you just look at the US alone, you'll see that the PM salary is around 3x more than the median salary and that we are at the top 22 in, in terms of total options or jobs in the US and there are over 1000 options, which is something incredible considering that this role of product manager didn't really exist so long ago or at least it didn't have the same recognition that it has today. Now, let's talk about career paths. I think there's a lot of discussion around how to break into product management, which obviously is very important, but I also want to focus the conversation around what's next and how can you continue growing in your career? Well, I'd like to break this down into three main areas. One is uh, entrepreneurship, which is an outlier, and I explained that, and then the other two are more traditional in the, within an organization. Common ground is that as a product person, you start as an individual contributor. Some companies offer the associate product manager role, which is fantastic. Uh, other companies don't have that option, in which case the entry level position would be called product manager. But both associate PM, PM and senior PM are individual contributor roles, which means is that you are going to be working directly with engineers, with designers and with business folks to build products. Now, here's the key part. At some point you have to decide, do you want to continue growing as an individual contributor or do you want to become a people manager? There's no right or wrong answer. I think it's just important to understand your options. So if you decide to grow as an individual contributor, that title is typically called principal product manager. Obviously, you will be rewarded, you will have more responsibilities, and you, in general, will continue growing, but you are going to continue being at the forefront of the action. You're still going to be interacting with designers, engineers, and business folks directly. However, if you choose the people manager path, that next title is typically called group product manager or director of product, and at that point, you are managing product managers, which it's also very intriguing because you might not be as close to the action as you used to be, 
but you are going to be shaping recruiting, culture, certain processes that will apply across the entire product organization and across your entire portfolio of products. So for people who choose the people manager path, then you can continue growing as a VP of product and eventually as a chief product officer. Then I put entrepreneurship because there are no rules here. You can become a founder and CEO when you, whenever you want. A lot of, there's a lot of overlap between being a founder and CEO and being a product manager, especially at the early stages of a company. I've seen so many PMs that decide to become founders. I've seen a lot of founders who eventually join larger organizations as PMs. So I just wanted to put it out there because that mindset of how to build something, how to put together a team, how to get feedback from a user can apply very well to whatever you decide to, to do with your career at some point. And by the way, there's no, you don't, you're not stuck, whatever you choose next, you can always reassess your options. And I think that's the beauty of the, the product management career. Um, this data is very refreshing because one out of three companies that we surveyed mentioned that they have a chief product officer. This is fantastic. Back in the day, product, the highest ranked person in the product team used to report to the chief marketing officer or to the chief technology officer. That is not true anymore. Now there's a chief product officer that sits at the table with other executives with direct report to the CEO. That ultimately is creating a product culture because it's recognizing that what you are doing is not a sub team anymore. It's definitely one of the key teams that are shaping the organization. And ultimately, there are a lot of CEOs that actually come from a product background, which I think is the ultimate validation. I love this quote from Elon Musk that says that CEOs should focus more on their products and that the financials come as a result. I believe that's true. I believe that the more CEOs focus on the user first and the long-term success of the user, then the more chances there is for a, a return on investment. But I love that now more CEOs are focusing on the long-term vision of their products and leading with the product and making sure they add value to the user instead of just trying to squish the last penny in the short term. And this correlates to a product-led culture that I've seen in many more organizations. What is product-led? Well, let's start with what is not. A lot of the traditional organizations would take more of a sales-led approach, which means that usually users, so there's a big difference, difference between the user, the person who's going to be using the product, and the person who's going to be paying for the product, right? Think of it, the traditional B2B SaaS model where maybe a CFO would sign the check, but then a different part of the organization is, is going to use the product that the CFO purchased. Well, in those type of models, there's a lot of interaction between the sales team and the decision maker. And then once it is closed, then the users get imposed a certain tool. Well, that is just not true anymore. That doesn't scale. We're seeing a new a new breed of companies that are, are becoming product-led, which means that they are putting their products out there. They're using the product as their forefront. They are letting the users use the product for free. They're letting the users be the growth engine. And of course, eventually that will lead to having conversations with decision makers about upgrading certain tools. But we believe that if you take that bottom-up approach, you let people try and even not just try, but use your product, that would lead to yes, less risky conversations because at the end of the day, if you purchase something for your organization, the worst thing that can happen is that then people don't use it. I will give you an example. Slack is ultimately um, paving the way here. They offer an incredible product that it's free in many cases and allows people to collaborate and be more productive. Eventually, if you feel like you need certain premium features, you will want to upgrade. And obviously, if you have half of the organization or more already using Slack, it's a no-brainer that you eventually will want to upgrade. And Slack is just one example out of many. This is not just for B2B SaaS organizations. They can be applied to so many others. So I like this visual because it puts the user in the middle. Being product-led is not, it's the same as being user-focused. It's not that you have to either put the product or the user. The user is in the middle and the user is getting value through your product. And then the product is powering the rest of the organization, the rest of the teams in your organization. So that means that if you are in a product led organization working in product, you're obviously going to have much more decision making power because what you are doing is ultimately impacting many other business functions. So we surveyed the uh, product leaders in our report and we found out that around three quarters are either product-led already or moving in that direction. So can't claim that product-led is for everybody, but it's definitely a really valid strategy that is here to stay and it's already paving the way and showing results. So 
Another trend that is supporting this product-led growth trend is that tools are more no-code than ever. Now, anyone can be a creator. You don't need to have a product manager title to build a digital product. Back in the day, if you wanted to use data, for example, you pretty much had to use SQL programming language or had to have a technical background or you had to have a good relationship with engineers in order to get what you wanted. Now, PMs or creators are more self-sufficient than ever. They can use tools, they can build something. And of course, eventually you also want to collaborate with other team members, but democratizing access to data, democratizing access to creating things, it's ultimately empowering more and more people to build something and build faster, which is also a competitive advantage in many cases. And last but not least, let's talk about training, lifelong learning specifically. So we realized that almost 80% of the PMs that we surveyed mentioned that learning and development opportunities was their number one perk, even over equity, which is huge. But we also asked them about if their companies are actually investing in themselves. And we realized that around 40% of the companies actually have an education stipend on sort of a, some, some sort of investment in their own learning and development. There's a huge disconnection here because if you want to retain talent, if you want to continue growing as a PM, you definitely need to invest. We cannot say, oh, product-led growth, product is the engine of growth for your organization. PMs are paving the way. They are at the forefront of innovation, but then at the same time, not invest in themselves. So put it differently, no great product manager is ever going to stay in an organization that is not investing in themselves. So that's just uh, some food for thought there. Summary, these are the five trends that I highlighted. So salaries and jobs are rising. Career paths are widening. Businesses are becoming more product-led. Tools are becoming more no-code. And lifelong learning is becoming more relevant than ever. Just to wrap things up, I'd love to say that this is the best time in history to build digital products. I think we have big responsibility now to continue leading innovation at our organizations. And if you enjoyed this presentation and want to download the full report, just scan this QR code or use the URL productschool.com report and you'll be able to get a free copy. Thank you so much.